Manchester United versus Manchester City then. This is my first preview in a while. Yes, it's been Christmas. Sorry about the lack of videos, but there's a few personal things going on as well. But I'm back. Hopefully the videos can stay consistent now throughout the year. It's been a hectic end to the year and start of the year for Manchester United. And let's see what happens in this massive game for Manchester United. It is massive more for Solskjaer than anything because a massive semi-final, okay, it's only the League Cup, but it is a great opportunity if Manchester United can get past this very good still Manchester City team. Let's not beat around the bush. It is a very good Manchester City team. They have had a bit of inconsistency this season, which they haven't had in the last couple of seasons, but still, they're a formidable team. And if we can get past these and potentially win this cup, then I think it would be massive for Solskjaer to get a monkey off his back, to get a win under his belt, to build some confidence for the for the team, for some of the young players, to get that winning feeling, and for Solskjaer himself, because he hasn't won a proper trophy in English football yet. He's won reserve stuff with Manchester United and stuff with Mulder, but nothing in England yet, so it would be great for him to get that monkey off his back, and that could be the catalyst. It was when we signed Patrice Evra and Unamia Vidic, that, they, they, that was their first trophy. It was the first trophy I think Wayne Rooney won against uh, Wigan. I think we swatted him aside about 4-0. And it, it was the catalyst to go on and to win other trophies for some of them young players. We had a, lot, a, a nice young team then. And they went on and won, won a lot of trophies. And some of the likes of Greenwood, Daniel James, haven't had that feeling yet of winning trophies. I mean, even, even some of the fringe players, the likes of Chong, Brandon Williams haven't had that feeling of winning a trophy yet and it would be great for them, their confidence and, and just get that winning mentality at Manchester United. But it is a long shot that we could win this competition. We are the outsiders going into this tie. Over two legs you would see Manchester City if they put a full strength line up out that they will probably comfortably over the two games get through. But you never know. We did beat them at the Etihad only a few weeks ago and maybe that was quite a shock result. But... We've actually been, I think, better form away from home against Man City than at home. But, I don't know, Manchester United's away form has been abysmal. So, whether that continues. But this one's at Old Trafford. I'm expecting a very difficult game. But I think Solskjaer's going to go with a pretty strong lineup. In his press conference this morning, he did say that there's still doubts over the likes of Jesse Lingard, Anthony Martial, Harry Maguire, to name a few players, that could potentially miss this game. Now, Harry Maguire got injured in the game against Wolves, so he could potentially miss this game, play through the pain barrier. Obviously, the likes of Scott McTominay, Paul Pogba are already ruled out of this game, but the likes of Anthony Martial and Jesse Lingard could still return to this game. But personally, I mean, he's going to obviously rotate the side again. The likes of, obviously, one bissaka will come back in. I, I don't know. If it's not Lindelof... Um, and Maguire it would probably be Lindelof and Jones because Tuan's AB is still out injured as well. There's question marks over who's going to be in goal. He hasn't given that away yet. I would presume it would be David Hare back in goal. Although Romero was brilliant against Wolves. Did nothing really much wrong. Made some crucial saves in that game. It will probably be Luke Shaw at left back. He's not going to pick Brandon Williams again. which Brandon Williams is playing at a higher level than Luke Shaw. So should be given that opportunity to continue his in, in the team there. But there's another game against Wolves coming up on the horizon next week, so I don't know. But the, the midfield is going to be the, going to be a real conundrum for Manchester United. It's going to be Matic and Fred, I believe, again because I don't know what what else it, it can really be. Probably Matic in the number ten position. If I think Lingard's going to be be out of this game, maybe Pereira in that position. I don't know. I really don't know. He probably would go for Pereira, but I'd go for, I don't know which one of the two. Rashford will probably be, probably be up top. Greenwood on one side and J and James on the other side. I think Martial and Lingard might not make this game. If they, if Obviously, I'm not too bothered if Lingard makes it because, to be honest, he hasn't been in good form for Manchester United. He hasn't. I know he's had off-the-field personal problems with his mum, and I do understand that, but he just hasn't been good enough for Manchester United. And I can't see the likes of Chong keeping his place in the team, to be honest with this one. Didn't do enough in that game against Wolves to, to warrant another start under Solskjaer because 
under Solskjaer, it's basically has to be you you you're at, you you make an impact in the game to basically him get back on the substitutes bench. Well, that's what it was for for Mason Greenwood. In when he was scoring goals, the next week he was back on the substitutes bench. So it's difficult, and he will he will probably be back on the substitutes bench if Anthony Martial is back. But I'm not too sure if he if he's going to be risked. I mean, that was only a couple of days ago. They're apparently ill. And probably one of them won't make this game. But we may see probably the likes, if, if they don't make it, the likes of Chong. And maybe Angel Gomez will be on the bench again. But it was disappointing that we didn't see Angel Gomez even get off the bench against Wolves. It does look like his days at Manchester United are numbered. But the reports are coming out that he's not playing because he won't sign a new contract. But yeah, apparently Tai Chong won't sign a new contract either. And he started the game and played most of the match. I don't really understand why... One rule for one and one rule for the other. But I do know that Gomez was, I think, injured or, or ill a few weeks ago, which was why he missed an under-23 game and then missed the Colchester game and the AZ Outmark game. So that was why he missed them. But with all these injuries, he should at least be getting some minutes from the bench. He brought Fred and Delo off the bench, which was disappointing against Wolves because I, I thought that he might be able to be that man that might be able to create something in the game, and I think he would potentially at this moment in time be a better option to have a to give an option to than Jesse Lingard because Jesse Lingard in the Premier League it's been over a year since he got a goal or an assist. So, to be honest, he can't do any worse than that if given the opportunity. And admittedly, he hasn't done what Greenwood and Rashford have done, that is why them to have ended up getting in the, in the Manchester United first team and, and basically staying there because them to have basically as soon as they've come into the team. That they've never looked back. They've they've basically been on it straight from the off. They've started their their careers fantastically well, and it is difficult when you come in like like Angel Gomez has and had, has sort of 10, 15 minutes here, 10, 15 minutes there to make an impact. But basically, that's what you basically got to do if you're given the opportunity as a youngster. You don't just walk into the team and get given the get given a, a starting berth. You have to have to rely on someone getting injured. A lack of players in the in the squad, and then to get in the team and then to perform straight away almost. I mean, you look at the other clubs; it's it's been hard at Manchester City and at Liverpool for youngsters to get in the team because they're at, they've got world class, better players in them positions than Manchester United do. And with the lack of if you have, if you hardly have any injuries, I mean, Man City have got such a massive squad that with a lack of injuries, or even if you get a few, they've still got a world class player to bring in. And it's hard for a youngster to get, get game time. But, I mean, that was how Brandon Williams got his chance through other players getting injured, Ash Young being injured and, and Luke Shaw being injured. And, and, and he got his breakthrough chance. But even then, he's still only getting a few games here and there. But it would be nice to see him get some more game time again soon. But I think this game is going to be difficult for Manchester United. We're going to have to look to play on the counter-attack again, even at home, soak up a lot of possession, try and hit them on the break with that pace from James whether it's Rashford, Marshall and Greenwood on that counter-attack, because we're not going to outplay this Man City team. Player for player, they're a better team than Manchester United. I mean, Aguero's hurt Manchester United on many occasions, didn't feature before in the game when we played them. He's been injured for a while, off and on, but he's back now and scored in the last game. He's going to be a massive threat. He is a level above Jesus. I know Jesus is a fantastic striker, got a very good goal-scoring record for Manchester City, and could hurt Manchester United, but he's levels above him, so if he plays, you would be worried. They've got so many fantastic players, David Silva, Bernardo Silva, Raheem Sterling, Riyad Mahrez, Foden, they've got an abundance of, of great attacking players, but Manchester United will hope to be looking to get whoever plays at centre-back and the full-backs, because the defensive side hasn't been there for Manchester City this season, and that's where Manchester United can look to, to explore even Port Vale scored against Manchester City. OK, they lost 4-1. But I'm hopeful Manchester United might be able to get themselves a goal in this game. And if Manchester United could, could come away, I think it's going to be a draw this one. It's at Old Trafford. Manchester United haven't got a terrible record at home. Away from home, we've been absolutely awful. But at home, we haven't been so bad. I'm going to go for Manchester United and Man City drawing this game 1-1. And to be honest, I'll be fairly happy still to be in the tie. I would like to be winning. I would, I would accept... A 2-1 win for Manchester United in this game. I mean, I don't think we're going to get a win in this game, but it isn't out of the rounds of possibility. And if Manchester United could take a sneaky 2-1 win 
into the second leg. Who knows, Manchester United could ground out a draw or something away at Man City. We would be in the final and that would be fantastic. It really would for Manchester United this season. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on the game. How do you see it going? What, how do you think you should set up to try and beat Manchester City? Do you think you should put out the same team you put out last time? Without, obviously without the injured injured players like some McTominay and, and maybe Lingard, but the rest of the team. And who do you think should come in for them players? Let me know in the comment section below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll talk to you all again soon. See ya.